Okay, we are live. Hey everyone, Couch Investor here, back with another guest on the channel. This time we have Roy Crossroads. He's on X Crossroads, but with a K. So the link will be down in the description as well. Today we are going to talk about PayPal, the bear case, the PayPal stablecoin, and I'm gonna start with maybe some breaking news that will lead into the the bear case points. So Roy, welcome on the channel. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. So I want to start off with this announcement right here, if it can actually work. Hmm. Voila, much better. So apparently there was a report by The Information that said PayPal ramping up new features to compete with Apple Pay and Stripe. We know one of the bare cases, let's say, is that Apple Pay Stripe will eat into PayPal's business. So teams across payment tech giant PayPal are rushing to add a raft of new features to make its digital wallet and online checkout more appealing to shoppers and merchants. PayPal's new CEO, Alex Chris, is ramping up efforts to defend itself against competitors such as Stripe and Apple Pay in a project codenamed Quantum Leap. I mean, I love it when they use these types of words. It always makes it even more, even more special. Um, oh, so yeah. Quantum Leap uh, reportedly includes streamlining the checkout process, redesigning PayPal's consumer app, and quicker integration for merchants, among other features. And I think you already talked a little bit about that in the latest earnings call. Um, I mean, we all know that the less clicks, the better when you check out. Um, we know that the ecosystem for PayPal, whether it's integration with Venmo, um, with everything else, needs to be streamlined. And this is something that they will touch on. It will take some time. But I mean, the focus for the new CEO is definitely to to make things a bit more integrated and seamless for well, small businesses, medium-sized businesses, enterprises, and just customers like like you and me. Um, so, yeah, are you surprised that this came out already right now, or do you think this is well, this was bound to happen already before the end of 2024? Uh, yeah, I don't know that they'll officially launch this before the end of 2024. They might. Um, it's getting close. So this was something that John Kim uh, alluded to in, in an interview back in August. Um, there were some mentions of it in prior quarters and prior interviews under Dan Schulman. So um, don't think of this as just an Alex Chris thing. PayPal has been moving in this direction for a while. Uh, John Kim was brought over last September, and uh, you know he's he did a masterful job with Expedia. And I actually thought he could have been the new CEO. Um, I'm glad that we get Alex, Chris, and John Kim, but you know they're uh, they've been looking at ways to innovate and integrate uh, better and more efficiently. And Chris reiterated that, and I was very thrilled to hear that in the earnings call, just because you want. The, as far as uh, I'm concerned, the top two guys uh, at PayPal, top two people, excuse me, because there's a mm -hmm. lot of very amazing ladies over there, uh, is Alex, Chris, the CEO, and of course John Kim, who's brought over from Expedia as the uh, chief uh, chief technology officer now. He different title. Uh, and with these two guys working in harmony, you know, they're going to uh, bring a lot of this into play. And so there was some allusion to this in an interview. Um, I, I put it on my uh, channel back in August 31st or something like close to the end of the month. Um, and it, they were a bit ambiguous, but many of these same uh, keywords were mentioned. And so I think it was just building onto that, this better integration. Um, of course, the Apple uh, now allows them to be able to ha have Venmo on there and PayPal as well. Um, so there's some collaboration. It's not just competition. But I mean, this is a direction that PayPal has been wanting to go. They've wanted to improve the experience on the front end for consumers, also for merchants and make things more seamless. And then Chris brings that extra layer with from Intuit as far as everything integrating very well in a seamless package where you don't have to be like, oh, well, I'm using Venmo now. And then, no, how do I get it over to PayPal? That that should be very seamless. They're owned by the same institution. So I'm thrilled to, to hear a little glimpse of that, that they're working on that internally. I don't know if we'll hear it before the end of uh, of this year, but for sure, mm -hmm. I would expect by, by the next quarter. So we'll see. Okay. When I mean, it, it is a bit crazy that we talk about Venmo and PayPal as if it's two different two different products, two different companies. Um, yes. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, it still grows. It's still very, very popular Venmo. I mean, I can't use it because in Europe it's not available, but I mean, the United States, it's everyone's Venmo. Let me Venmo this or let me cash up you this. Even if they have Apple Pay, that's also something I, I heard recently that even those that have Apple, Apple Pay, 
choose to use Venmo, which in my opinion, I mean, that's, that's a pretty big deal, even though you can send it. I mean, I found this out because I don't have an iPhone, but on iMessage, you can also send money um, to people and still people prefer Cash App or Venmo. So, I mean, okay, that's, yeah. that's a pretty good indication. When your product becomes a verb, you know you've done well. So uh, I, they'll always keep that name there, but there needs to be better integration. And PayPal, I, we won't talk about this as far as a bear case, but in the past, which I see changing under these two, and this announcement alludes to it, um, they've not integrated their their products very well. So when they do, do a, a, an acquisition, a merge, well, not really a merger, but acquisitions in the past, those have been handled for the most part quite inefficiently. That even in really excellent cases where it worked out well, like Braintree, uh, they, they really messed up. There's a lot of opportunity that they lost along that way. Uh, and so I see that changing uh, under John Kim, under Alex Chris. Uh, you know, one of those, I, I don't know. I, I don't want to get into it because it's not really the, the point of the discussion. But uh, no, they, they definitely are, are steering uh, or changing uh, the, the direction of PayPal. Uh, it's going to be a, a more integrated focus. And so announcements like this you know, are only further confirmation of what they're trying to do internally. Now, whether they're able to succeed in doing it or not, we'll have to see. Uh, but with uh, the, the people that they're bringing on board, and especially Kim and Chris, who have done this before with other companies, I, I, and, and Diego as well, that, that came over from Verizon, I, I think that they mm -hmm. have an excellent chance of success. Diego Scotti. I agree. I think, I mean, I've heard lots of lots of criticism on, on PayPal. I can understand it's a it's called it legacy type of business. It's It's maybe another IBM, who knows? It's going down, taking market share, it's not innovating, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, fine. But at this price, I mean, it's a bit silly not to take the risk reward here uh, for, for PayPal, which still has over 400 million users. I mean, why not take a chance on, on this thing? Um, now, why not? We're going to talk about the, the, bearish, uh, mm -hmm. the bearish points right now. Um, I'll pull up your, uh, your tweet here. Um, in case someone wants to wants to read that as well, um, so yeah, maybe we, you could go through your your uh, your bear case. Let's get for yeah, uh, yeah. for PayPal. So just just to preface this, I am a, a PayPal bull. Um, I, I think that it is important for those that are bullish to also consider the other side of the coin. It's really easy to just be um, to have confirmation bias and that everything that you see is oh the yeah, other is great. There's no flaws in the company, and that's frankly not the fact with PayPal at all. In fact. Up to this point in time, the bears have been right, and there there is a credible bear case here. It's not uh, impossible. It's not you know hasn't been discredited fully. I think it has soft softened and changed since the previous quarter. It's so all tend to do these uh, quarterly updates. But yeah, the bear case basically there's three main uh, legs for it. Uh, so the first one is macro. Of course, in a macro scenario where there's a massive global recession, uh, a durable goods recession, everybody's going to get hit especially fintech and of course paypal is a global company so it's going to get hit very very hard and so that's been a bit of the case as a lot of people have been forecasting and many still do that there's going to be a recession next year now most that, that are calling for that see a soft uh a recession or a small recession just you know a small dip in the united states maybe a bit more especially over in europe uh and i, I think maybe you can speak on that but uh no, that if if that actually happens, or if it actually is much worse than anticipated, and some are calling for this a massive global depression, PayPal is not going to do well. Uh, Gabrielle Rabinovich, she was the uh, acting CFO before they hired Jamie Miller, mm -hmm. and uh, she was asked in a, a really uh, interesting interview. Uh, it'd be late September, I believe. What keeps her up at night? You know, what's the biggest worry? And it's macro. Uh, other uh, payment processors have alluded to it as well. There are macro concerns. Worldline, you know, of course, came out with this bombshell a month, uh, six weeks ago, uh, where they basically spelled gloom and doom in their space, at least in Europe. And uh, of course, uh, Visa came out uh, with earnings about the same day. There've been other payment processors as well. Adyen had a great investor day. Uh, PayPal, Square, uh, Square's not really exposed to it over or block rather in mm -hmm. Europe, but all of them have basically said, no, uh, 2024 might be, you know, a little bit choppy. Uh, there may be a, even a little bit of recession there, but they're not saying what word line is. Uh, so most of the figures, as far as the macro, 
Uh, it's still valid. It's still in play, but there's been a lot of positives, uh, especially in the United States. GDP P figures have ticked up. There's been a really strong opening for holiday spend. Those Cyber Five uh, have been particularly strong. Even Alex Chris, the CEO of PayPal, chimed in and, and noted how uh, strong the, the uh, five days were. Now, we don't have anything to compare it with just because PayPal had not been incredibly transparent about that holiday mm -hmm. spend, except I believe in 2021. So transparency is changing under Alex Chris. It's great to see, but we don't know how good of a quarter yet until they actually report. But yeah, for now, I would say that that's still a valid uh, argument. Now, uh, you're over in Europe. Uh, can you speak to as far as like what the macro is looking like, the holiday spending in that? So, I mean, in Europe, it's been actually since 2008, where I feel like the economy has not really done much. I mean, if you compare it to the United States, it's 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 ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And it's because, well, United States, you have more, let's say, regulations that give, give startups, give large companies the incentives to actually invest, grow. And that's how your GDP is actually growing. I mean, there's yes. very little incentive in, at least in Belgium, probably in other countries in Europe as well, to, to start a, a company, to be a startup in Europe, because taxes are so high. I mean, in France, they're doing some some good things, I think, even though they always complain that they have to work too much there, but <laughs> <laughs> that's that's our neighbors. But yeah, Europe's economy is is deaf. I mean, we can see it with the euro as well. It's it could be much, much better, but all they do is is regulate, regulate, regulate on everything, on big tech, on AI, on it's it's ridiculous. Like they put shackles on every innovation that that you put out there. Which is again why I still my I mean hundred percent of my investments are US US companies because I mean like Bur Warren Buffett said never bet against the United States and why should I pick pick a continent or or another country that that just doesn't like innovation doesn't like I mean new companies I saw I saw a, a tweet by someone I mean since since the start of the century how many how many companies in Europe have have uh, I mean, been made and are now worth hundred billions of dollars, probably zero compared to the United States, which has trillion dollars company and hundred billion dollars companies. So yeah. yeah, there's some some good ones like Adyen's one, Booking.com is good, you know. But yeah, there's it. I, I'm uh, blessed for being in this country, and and uh, it's great that we can choose which country we invest in or, or what company. So mm -hmm. you know, that's that's more of a uh, general. Uh, generalized fintech that'll hit everybody. Um, not equally for everyone, but certainly it'll hurt PayPal, but very specific to PayPal and probably the most credible bear case. I, I think the largest contributor as well for why the stock price is down and didn't rise as much as you know, I would have hoped with an amazingly well done earnings call, but as far as results, they were, they were solid, mm -hmm. is margins. Uh, margins yeah. for PayPal, you know, have been cited uh, for quite a bit. Now, this is a little graph here that kind of shows that decline. But you know, look at that main number right there. You can see where you know the course their margins had ticked up somewhat, and it's been pretty clear that the trend has actually gone down. So, so their uh, their gross margins uh, have not inflected, and they've been talking about a gross margin inflection for uh, several quarters now. Uh, under Dan Schulman, I think he began to allude to it back in quarter one, if I'm not mistaken. It may have been quarter two. He's out now. Alex Chris came in. Uh, of course, this was his first earnings call, but previously in quarter three, Shulman, Rabinovich, and others had set up this expectation for quarter four, uh, or excuse me, quarter three, uh, for that to be the point where margins would inflect, the gross margins. Net, net margins already inflected because they've done a lot of in-house cutting, uh, mm -hmm. which has led to a lot of growth uh, in, in the EPS figures. But uh, as far as the gross margin inflection, it didn't happen. We actually saw it slow down as far as its rate of decrease. Now, there's a lot of reasons for that. Uh, but the, you know, the bottom line is they have not executed. They've said, you know, we're going to see this. Alex Chris said, well, you know, he kind of kitchen synced it. He said, uh, we need to actually move this back. We're going to see the inflection in 2024. So we're not even going to see that in quarter four. And for a lot of investors, you know, that's a legitimate concern. A lot of bears, they keep citing it. Uh, and so there's, there's a few drivers that they have for margin expansion. Uh, and uh, so one of those, of course, is uh, global scaling of Braintree. Braintree is, uh, you know, the back end support. It's, it's uh, used uh, for, for usually uh, larger merchants that don't need the PayPal brand label. Uh, it's a very good product. There's basically, it's a, uh, 
there, there's basically three, you know, Stripe, uh, there's Adyen, and then there's Braintree. There's some other smaller and more specialized ones, but those are the big ones. Um, Braintree operates in the North America segment primarily. North America segment uh, has the lowest margins. It just, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter who you are, you're gonna get the lowest margins here, uh, especially in the United States. And so as Braintree scales, and it's primarily a North American product, internationally to Europe, to Africa, to other places as well, um, you'll actually see their margins improve. So that's one source. Um, acceleration of innovation, you know, that was alluded to in the announcement. Uh, we'll talk about the stable coin. That's a big, big piece of this. Uh, PayPal Complete Payments is being rolled out uh, globally. It's first uh, with existing uh, merchants, but also furthermore, that's basically that's Braintree product with PayPal's label on it. There's a bit more to it than that, but it's a white, uh, it's a branded label product. So they actually increase and improves in margins. Uh, and of course, efficiency gains and right sizing expenses. Those are things that Alex Chris has talked about vociferously in the previous earnings call. Um, that's not going to improve the gross margin, but that'll improve net margin. So, but for now, um, PayPal actually has to execute on this. If they keep, if Alex Chris keeps coming in, they say, well, you know, this, that, and the other, we, we just weren't able to, to do it this time and we'll roll it out to next quarter, next quarter. I don't know that the stock will improve meaningfully, even if they post mm -hmm. really good top line numbers. Uh, if that uh, the margins continue to uh, get worse and worse, it doesn't really matter how much they beat as far as their revenue. N not as much anyway. But the, I think the moment we see that inflection, not only guided for specifically, but actually hit, uh, I think we'll see some very good things, very, very good things with the stock. No, I agree. I think it's one of those things where uh, we've seen this with other companies as well, where the, let's say top line beat, bottom line beat as well, but the market didn't really care much. I mean, I'll talk, maybe I'll take an example, Pinterest, a company that was linked with PayPal as well when it was worth, uh, I don't know, $40 billion or so. Um, yeah, I mean, they beat top and bottom line, but since monthly active users continue to go down, market didn't really care about, about the beat. I think we could see the same thing here with PayPal once the margins improve or maybe the bleeding has stopped um the market will definitely react positively and maybe maybe we'll get a good i mean guidance for 2024 with alex chris with more transparency he might be giving us a lot more numbers than we're used to and that could be enough to to push the stock a bit a, a bit on the upside finally but yeah execution here is key i mean he has he talks like a great CEO, unlike the last one. Yes, yes. But he needs to walk the walk, yeah. Yeah, it's just, it's talk until it's not. And I, I invested heavily in PayPal when Alex Chris was announced and I did some research. I didn't recognize him at first. Um, I, I did a, I've done a lot of research, listened to a lot of Chris talking, a lot of his articles that he's written. And I was incredibly excited. And I, I think that excitement is justified. But, you know, as far as the market is concerned, they, they need to see it. And once they see it, not, not just talk to, not just guided for, but actually see that margin inflection, that's when things get really exciting. And I do believe we'll see it next year, but until it's seen, we don't know. It's still part of the bear case and it's credible. Yeah. Now, 100%. But the next section, you know, is, is competition. It, it relates to margins. Uh, some of that margin compression is certainly because Braintree has that reputation of being offered at perhaps a, a lower rate. Uh, competition has said that Braintree is offered uh, below uh, the, the cost to PayPal, that PayPal is actually taking a loss on it. I don't think that that's true. Maybe it is for one or two vendors, uh, but, uh, you know, that's the reputation. And, and I do think that they're offering it at a, a bit lower margin or a little bit lower take rate than uh, some of the other competitors. And there's some reasons for that. Braintree is growing 31% year over year. So that's not an incredible concern for me, but competition is real. This is an area where bears will come in and they'll say, well, it's a really crowded field and PayPal is losing its market share. Those are absolutely true. Bears are 100% right on that. There's a lot of payment service providers, uh, small ones, large ones, specialized ones like Toast, uh, and uh, oh, their, their symbol is four, uh, Shift Four. Yeah, really Shift good. Four, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Re really excellent uh, company. I'm not invested there, but uh, there's a lot of excited, exciting ones in this space. Now, the main competition you can break it up into a few categories. So you have the tech giants, and of course Google, Google Pay, Amazon Pay, and Apple Pay are all threats. Mm -hmm. Of those, Apple Pay, of course, is the most cited. Uh, a lot of pay people rightly say that Apple Pay is eating PayPal's lunch. And 
there is truth to it, but not as much truth as people think. Uh, Apple, of course, is is an Apple product. Uh, not everybody has an Apple phone. It's not available in all countries. Uh, and it's been around, oh, you'd have to help me out, but I think since 2005, 2007, it's, it's a while. Um, PayPal still exists. So it's not yeah. going to get rid of PayPal completely. Um, it, it is a product that people very much love. And I'd love to see PayPal's uh, checkout just to be more streamlined like Apple Pay. Uh, of course, Apple Pay, um, they're not a payment service provider. They, they need someone in the back end, like an Adyen. Uh, they need Braintree. Uh, they need Stripe. And I believe that they use all three uh, or they're, yeah. they're able to be used with all three. Uh, rather. And so some of those uh, revenues that come through Apple Pay, they get processed through Braintree. So, you know, uh, in net, uh, as Apple Pay grows, it does take a little bit away from PayPal, but it, it's not going to kill off PayPal. PayPal will grow right along with it. Um, of course, there's lawsuits out there. Uh, there's been a lot of scrutiny, even actually directed towards PayPal as well, uh, but towards Apple Pay and towards some of the other tech giants. We uh, live in a very litigious society here in the United States. <laughs> And Apple has, and, and many others, Amazon as well, have been accused of being monopoly. Google as well. All of them actually have been hit over this last year. And the current administration is very anti-monopoly. Um, whether these actually come to something or not, I'm not sure. But it seems like this has actually led to greater cooperation. I, I mentioned it before, where uh, instead of being strict competitors, uh, now you know pay, uh, Apple's wallet uh, allows for PayPal and Venmo to be used. There's a bit more integration with uh, PayPal, with Braintree, uh, with Apple Pay. So uh, they're more collaborators at this point than competition, but they are competition. Um, so I, I think that those those will do well, especially Apple Pay. Uh, it'll hurt PayPal a little bit, but maybe it's not going to kill PayPal. Uh, fintech peers are more uh, where the credible competition is coming from, and Adyen in particular. Uh, they're that back-end uh, payment processor. They have, they're an incredibly run company. And if you look at their stock, their ticker, they had a great investor day. Uh, and they went up for a reason, you know, no, nothing changed with their situation, but uh, they're an awesome long-term company. Um, one of the few in Europe that I'd be like, man, I, I want to add that uh, at some point. Uh, but uh, Braintree, of course, is a direct competition with Adyen. And uh, they actually seem like that they're um, doing quite well against Adyen. Uh, Stripe, uh, it, it's harder to get a read on that because it's a private company, but I think all three are going to do well. Uh, this is not a winner-take-all space. Now, the main thing with uh, this uh, this type of competition, of course, some might uh, quote, uh, you know, Shopify is mentioned there. Uh, there was a, um, I can't remember the, oh, uh, it's with really famous uh, streamers. I, I can't think of, Chamath is one of them, uh, Chamath Palapatia. Mm -hmm. um, Th those other guys, um, man, I'm, I'm going to hate that. I... What's that? The all in, the all in guys, all or... in, all in podcast. Yes, they had a uh, symposium. I, I think it was called with Toby Ludke from Shopify. They they've been at Shopify for a while, and it was actually really helpful to kind of understand what's going on among those three mm -hmm. with Adyen, Stripe, and PayPal. Um, one of the the most dangerous pieces of of competition is if something like a Shopify says, you know what, we'll just build our own in-house product or eBay, even though PayPal is not an eBay anymore, that's run by Adyen. Um, if they start saying, you know what, we can do this ourselves, we can do it better, we could do it for cheaper. And so Toby Lutke was asked about this and uh, by Chamath. And he said, no, we're actually going to rely on an orchestration blend between um, several different payment service providers. Braintree is one of those. Uh, and it just, uh, rather than build in-house, which is very expensive and not always successful, if anyone could do it, Shopify could do it. And they said, you know what? We're just going to do the orchestration model. Now, part of the bear case is these massive companies like an Uber saying, you know what? Uh, this contract is up for grab. We need a payment service provider. Let's pit Stripe and Adyen and uh, Braintree and maybe a couple others against each other. May the best price win. Well, the best price is usually uh, it usually does win, but realistically, most companies are going the way of Shopify. That they're saying rather than rely on one, that if something goes wrong with it and we need out, we're just we're toast. Uh, they can't have that. And so uh, they instead choose a blend. And they'll, depending on how one is doing as far as acquisition rates, as far as latency, as far as fees, they'll shift that blend in one direction or another. And most large companies that have been interviewed about this, they talk about this blend. So this actually is, is not as much of a drag on Braintree. Adyen is not going to kill Braintree. Braintree is not going to kill Adyen. Uh, companies may shift from one to another. Recently, uh, McDonald's added uh, Venmo support, for example. They've, they've been very prominently using Adyen. And they're like, you know what, let's, let's add Venmo. Um, 
the other part with this too is even though there's competition and new competition all the time, if you look at the payment processing solutions uh, market, there's a lot of different surveys out there. This is just one of them. The CAGR uh, of that over the next, uh, well, eight years, 2022 through 2030 is immense. Uh, and of course, in the United States, it's it's maybe a little bit less versus globally, uh, but there's a lot of growth here. So PayPal's in the situation where I think that they will continue to lose market share. I think that that's credible in the bear case. Um, I, I think that they may have a little bit worse margins on their product than Adyen, uh, but this is nevertheless a market that's growing so immensely. Their revenue will continue to improve even as their market share perhaps decreases somewhat. Um, they're not going out of business. This is not a winner take all market. Um, this, there's multiple winners. And I think all three of those will probably do fairly well, especially Adyen and PayPal. So there's other mentions there too. You know, of course, buy now, pay later. Um, that's all the rage. I think after this post, uh, that was uh, a big piece of the Black Friday success. PayPal has a yep. great be in, buy now, pay later product, although it's very small. Uh, and so there, there's areas where uh, for perhaps uh, like the peer to peer payments, uh, like Cash App and Venmo, they're direct comp competitors. Uh, PayPal kind of does it all, though. So there lots of competition, but it's a growing space. Uh, it, nevertheless, it's still a, a bear argument. Now, the, the wild card out there is government. Um, government, of course, people talk about Fed now a little bit less, I think, than when it was first initially launched. Um, that That's a United States uh, government uh, payment solution. And myself, I'm a, a private market or a free market guy. Um, I, I don't usually see the government as a credible threat uh, unless they're subsidizing something very, very heavily or they mandate it by force. Now, I need to do an article and a little bit more research before I go into this. But the, the bear case is if FedNow becomes like Brazil's PIX. Uh, mm -hmm. PIX was their government service. Uh, PayPal did a good bit of business in Brazil. And basically, uh, for the most part, every major payment service provider in Brazil has just given up on the space. They may still be operating, but they're not trying to grow there. They just realize that that PIX has such dominance that they can't really compete. So if Fed now turns into that and it would take a lot and a lot of time, then yeah, PayPal is going to be incredibly hurt. I, I just don't see it uh, yet. Um, I, I don't see it actually happening at all. Um, but, you know, that's a, a wild card out there. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, people, I recently, recently, last couple of years, I found out because I have family in Brazil and actually the the financial systems there are way ahead of what people would think. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's in Belgium, for example, sending money from one account to the other still takes around a day or so. Right now, previously, it was two, three days. And in, in Brazil, for example, this has been the case I mean, for, for many, many years where you can send money and you get it, I mean, in a couple of hours or so, which I was pleasantly surprised. Um, but yeah, definitely a solution such as FedNow or Brazil's PIX is is something to take into consideration. But since, I mean, United States, open market, competition, stuff like that, I, I don't really see that happening because it will hurt many, many companies. Um, and well, you hurt many companies, you hurt businesses you hurt employees and then well, you have more unemployment which isn't which isn't the point um so yeah definitely something to take into consideration with regards to paypal and shopify the way that they they take m multiple uh, companies to make sure that well it fits all, all their needs all the time i mean i think they learned their lesson with the logistics side of things um yeah. they try to do it in-house they saw maybe it's not worth it let's sell it and partner up with them uh along the way um, and then also now by with prime with amazon i think they they learn their lessons that sometimes well it's not worth it for them to to build it in-house so yeah makes sense makes sense that the, this is the way they're going sure Ed, do you want me to go through real quickly on the unsub upsets that unsubstantiated bear cases yeah um, i mean there is a bear emoji so yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. These ones are thrown out often and I don't find, so the, the previous ones we talked about, you know, there's two sides to a coin, but I would say, yeah, the bears have a point with every single one of them. Uh, some more substantiated than others. Margins is, of course, the most significant. Macro, maybe second, and then the, the competition, third. Uh, unsubstantiated means I don't think that it's really a piece of a bear argument at all. Uh, there's a couple of reasons for that. So the first is active accounts. Now, if you look at that graphic, it's straight from PayPal earnings. Uh, good mm -hmm. numbers, 428 million active accounts. Active accounts are defined as somebody using PayPal once 
in 12 months. <laughs> merchant uh, personnel, hopefully they break that out as far as knowing yeah. what's a merchant versus not in future earnings. Uh, so it, it's, uh, you know, it kind of shows that, that shift there. You can see that it peaked, of course, uh, at the end of the, the COVID cycle. Uh, and a lot of those were COVID accounts uh, or they were subsidized accounts. In the United States, when they were giving funds, uh, one of the ways you could receive it is through, I believe, Venmo, but I know for sure PayPal as well. And so some of those accounts simply existed just for that. <laughs> Um, also, during COVID, Shulman and others said, you know what, we're going to uh, make active accounts our most important definition. We want to grow at all costs. It doesn't really matter what it costs us. And so they heavily subsidized that. And as a result, they spent a lot of money. They gained some uh, active accounts. Uh, but when you're paying for people to use your product and they don't do anything beyond that, that's not great. So the more important number, you can see that that yellow line is hard to show up there. That's transactions per account that continues to improve. And so rather than focus on getting these accounts that may use PayPal once or twice per year, they're focusing on those that use PayPal again and again and again regularly. Uh, and so I'm, I'm one of those, I'm, I'm using it a little bit more often here, especially as an investor, and I'm liking the experience, frankly. But uh, so one of the big uh, downshifts there uh, in quarter three, and they mentioned this, was that they stopped subsidizing some of those uh, accounts, specifically in Latin America. Um, they did a good job with their 10Q, uh, breaking down those numbers. And yeah, they were losing millions, I, I believe actually tens of millions of dollars on those accounts, just subsidizing uh, and, and doing a lot of advertising and things where they realized, you know what? There, there's nothing here. Yeah, maybe a few people we've, we've gained that are good customers, but for the most part, we're just spending money to not grow. So it doesn't make sense. They've shifted away from that. Uh, Alex, Chris, and others have alluded to active accounts continuing to grow. But as long as you're seeing that the transaction uh, volume actually increase, and of course, the transactions per account, uh, and it's growing at a healthy clip, 13%. Uh, I don't think that the bear case is credible here, uh, especially when they're saving money uh, to let some of those subsidized accounts bleed off. So as long as we see this actually improve over the next year, um, I, I think that we're fine. It's actually a very minor slip. Um, so second piece, of course, Fed now, we already kind of talked about that. And then mm -hmm. XPay is is the other uh, one that's thrown out there. Um, I, I I like Elon Musk a lot. I, where are you at, Neil? You, you like him? Uh, as far as yeah, I, I mean, uh, I have after 30 plus percent of my portfolio in, in his company, so yeah. I better like him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, he's uh, I, I like him, you know, both as an investor and just you know, his, his personality and, and what he does, you know, as far as innovation and dreaming big. And so, of course, he bought uh, Twitter, changed it to X, and uh, now has this uh, X pay idea. So, the idea is to make X a uh, not just a payment service provider. Uh, but also, you know, peer-to-peer -peer, uh, type and, and, and everything app, basically. So like we, uh, Chat Pay is in China. That's his design on uh, creating uh, the X platform. And yeah, that's possible. But, uh, you know, a lot of people don't trust Elon Musk. Uh, they wouldn't trust X with their money. The product doesn't exist yet. Elon Musk, he can do, I think, anything that he has his mind put to and his time set on. He's divided between a lot of projects right now. And even if this really happens as far as timelines, we know as far as full self-driving, as far as Cybertruck, like they eventually come, but it takes a long time. Uh, I don't know that we'll ever see an XPay or at least one that's a, a credible threat to PayPal. I, I tend to not uh, believe in products that don't exist. Uh, and so we'll just have to see if XPay comes and if it is a credible threat to PayPal, maybe that's in five years. You know, they'll, they'll announce it maybe before, but. I don't see it doing anything over the, the short term, um, but uh, we'll have to see. So I'm not putting much thought into that. But yeah, there's a bear market here, uh, or not bear market, bear um, argument here. Uh, mm -hmm. There's several different directions you can take that. Uh, for myself, I think it's still one of the best risk to awards mark in the market as we enter 2024. There are some risks. So you know, if you're choosing to invest in PayPal, just don't discount the risks. Don't make short-term bets. Um, invest what you're comfortable with. And if the situation changes, like if if we're looking at mid 2024 and PayPal still has not inflected their gross margins and they're ambiguous as far as when that's happening and why that slide is continuing, I'm going to be trimming. Uh, I'll be taking losses along the way. So I hope that doesn't happen. I don't think it will happen, but you know, we'll have to see. Yeah, I think that's a good uh, a good sum of, I mean some of all the all the bear points right now and i mean i'm invested in in paypal it's not in the main portfolio because i still see it as a let's say short-term bet um yes. so yeah when we talk about the x pay thing 
I think by the time there might be an XPay, um, my bet with PayPal will probably be over already and either it's up a lot or it hasn't really moved much. But yeah, I think, I mean, we are now at a point where we've put, we've put our bets in for PayPal and really there, there's no point I mean, for me personally, that's how I feel. There's no point for me to be adding more and more, even if the stock stays as around between 55 and $60, because I mean, I've put my bets in now. It's like, show mm -hmm. me what you've got. And if they show me next quarter, let's say they already show us something positive, fine. The stock will probably go up. I mean, stocks these days on good news can pop up 20% or something like that. I'm okay adding more after that 20% pop because even after that, the price remains pretty attractive. Yes. Yeah. And I already have that position. So my core position has gone up 20%. Um, but yeah, I think 2024 is going to be interesting, especially as I believe interest rates will come down. Um, inflation should come down as well. Uh, will definitely help fintech players, not just PayPal, but the fintech industry. Um, and I think you're already seeing some of some signs of that with other players, unfortunately, with Square, Affirm, things like that, a block, should I say? I mean, why did they change the name? I don't know. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think, I mean, PayPal is is very very well positioned if managed correctly to to grow much much more than what it did actually in the last year and a half or, or two. I mean, coming out coming out of the pandemic and definitely becoming a, a stronger company because yes, it's free cash flow positive. I mean, it's buying back five billion dollars worth of its own shares, but that five billion has been five four billion for the last I don't know five years or something like that. It has not really improved much. Um, which is also something I'm watching. I mean, if they can improve that free cash flow, um, things will really get interesting and maybe it will become a core position in my portfolio. Um, they they have a lot to prove in 2024. That's that's definitely one of the, the big conclusions here. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that uh, I think we'll see it. Uh, you know, I, we won't maybe get into this, but uh, the bull case, a big part of that is that operational efficiency. That's one of the reasons why they've grown well this year. And if you if somebody is invested in PayPal or thinking about it, listen to the the previous earnings call. Uh, it's one of the best well done earnings calls. Very clear as far as what Alex Chris's vision is. There's a few things he had to be ambiguous on just because it wasn't the time yet for those announcements. Uh, but the direction that they're taking this company. It's going to be a lot leaner, a lot more efficient. Uh, I think there's going to be a lot of cuts that are realized. And so that uh, non-GAAP EPS growth, I think, will be mind-blowing. Uh, we'll have to see. Uh, we haven't seen those announcements as far as the exact cuts that, that uh, he's alluded to very heavily in quarter three, but it's exciting. Yeah. I mean, I like the announcement directly that they have, that they're putting people into place for that different, different focus in different business segments. Oh, I think yeah. it's important. I would love to see them focus a lot on offline payments. I mean, in-store payments this is something that Square, really Square, not Block, but Square, the business does mm -hmm. does very well. Toast does it as well. I think it's it's a big deal that that PayPal maybe I mean would say drop the ball, but it's a mm -hmm. it's a missed opportunity in in my opinion. Um, yeah, but who knows? Maybe maybe they'll do that. Uh, further down the line, I think they have a lot, a lot of work to do, anyways. But uh, it's it's definitely something that I was like, hmm, this this could have been a good a good revenue stream for for them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they they dropped the ball. Uh, pretty much every single acquisition they've had, except for maybe Venmo, uh, has not lived up to its potential. Even Braintree hadn't grown maybe as much as it would have if PayPal hadn't had held it back just for the sake of branded. Um, Zettle, Zoom, same thing. Honey, uh, whew, Honey is, it's useful, it's but very, man, they paid yeah, so it's much. Very, it's, it's 4 billion, was it? I yes, think? yeah. And yeah. Happy Returns was one of those happy returns where they sold off and I'm, I'm glad mm -hmm. that they did. But uh, no, this is, it went from kind of a Frankenstein's a monster where you have all these different parts uh, trying to become the everything app, but really poor integration to, if it doesn't fit, we're going to sell it. We're going to get rid of it. If somebody is redundant, we're going to go ahead and remove them. Uh, and we're going to just streamline things and have that much tighter focus and better integration. We should see that next year. If we don't, 
I'm out. <laughs> but I, I think that there's a very good chance that we see just the quality of people that have been brought on. They've done this before. So, and, and one of those pieces that I'm really excited about as far as that innovation uh, and integration is, of course, the uh, stable coin. Uh, so if we want to talk about that, that's a... Uh, yeah. uh, uh, You want to, uh, are you able to yes. bring up? I can bring, I can share if you need to. It's, no, I think it's, yeah. Yeah. So um, I, I've written a lot on this and there's a lot that's being written. Um, there's actually a, um, so anyway, the, the stable coin is PayUSD or PiUSD. I've heard it both ways. Uh, I prefer PayUSD. It just sounds better to me. Um, so this stable coin they announced in August, uh, not too much fanfare at all. It's just kind of announcement that was on their newsroom no media attention, uh, or it's very muted at least. And when I read about it, I'm like, whatever, it's a stable coin. How much could they do with it? Actually, quite a lot. And if anyone is interested in this, Paxos uh, is the, the one that actually issues the coin. Um, they uh, are having a, um, a symposium with, uh, with PayPal uh, tomorrow. I believe it's 11 a.m. Eastern time. Um, you have to register for it. So just go to pay, uh, Paxos. Uh, I'll be listening in and just seeing what's there. Uh, but basically, the stable coin, I was thinking of it as a, an uh, opponent or opposition or competition to Tether, uh, which, of course, is immense. And they do make massive revenues off or USDC. Um, stable coins, there's been a lot of issues with them. And so it's kind of unique with PayPal saying, hey, we're rolling out a stable coin because this is not just all that they do. They, they have this credible name with them. People still love and trust PayPal for the most part, although they've made missteps along the way. I'll acknowledge that. Uh, but mm -hmm. uh, if you look into Tether, uh, there, there's a lot of sketchiness, a lot of concerns. Uh, and of course, a there's lot. been <laughs> a lot, a lot. And over I the mean, uh, I, last... I still time, believe it's it's not fully backed by the, the amount they're mm -hmm. seeing. I think it's more close to being fully backed, but I don't know what percent they're at. It's not 100%. Uh, and there's been st uh, a lot of stablecoin issues over the last year and a half. Uh, thankfully, we're moving away from algorithmic stablecoins and that sort of stuff. But so PayPal is one of those where uh, they, they allow themselves to be audited. Uh, I believe it's monthly uh, by a New York agency, a uh, government agency, by the way. Uh, and so they they show that hey, everything is, is up to date. We fully backed everything. Um, there there's no concerns there. Um, some people don't love the coin. Some love the coin. But where it's actually most interesting is is where PayPal plans to use it. Yes, if Tether falls up to pieces or USDC mm -hmm. does or government regulation says, hey, you have to have this kind of audits and do these sort of things in order for uh, your stable coin to be recognized and, and used and, and not oppressed by the SEC, the Stop Everything Crypto Organization, which, by the way, has uh, launched a, an investigation against uh, uh, this stable coin as well. So PayPal is not immune to this. They do have a reputation of working extremely well with regulators, so I don't have concerns there. But uh, stop everything crypto just has to do that, you know, and that's that's their name, the SEC. Uh, but uh, the way that PayPal primarily plans to use this is uh, through cross-border payments and also internally. So with internally, I don't go into this in this post here, but there was an announcement uh, about an, an Uber partnership, actually a couple of them with PayPal. Uh, Braintree, of course, is being used heavily with, with Uber. Uh, but what was really interesting is there was an option for Uber drivers uh, to get a PayPal wallet and be paid the same day uh, through uh, PayUSD going directly to their wallet just as these transactions happen. So instead of waiting whatever processing times or having that paycheck that comes you know, every two weeks, PayPal is like, hey, that's antiquated. Why are we doing this? We have the stable coin. Let's just use it right here. Um, so that, that was one of those internal uses that might drive a little bit more attention to the hyper wallet. Um, but the, the main play, I think, is with a cross-border payment. So right now, cross-border payments are uh, the, the largest margin of any product for PayPal. Um, they, they, if you try to send a payment from uh, United States to, to China or Africa or anywhere, you're going to pay an arm and a leg. It's going to be incredibly expensive. Now, we as, as American consumers, I'm sure it's the same in Europe, that when you buy something from another country, you may not see that, but the merchant is paying those very, very high cross-border uh, fees. And so pay USD, well, the reason why, part of the reason why it's very high is you can almost think of it as a lot of toll booths along the way, mm -hmm. virtual or electronic toll booths, payment rails. And as you go through these payment rails and you go through each of these checkpoints, you got to pay a little bit to this guy and this guy and this guy. And it's it's the death by a thousand paper cuts. And so by the time you get that transaction there, everybody's gotten their little bit of a cut. Now, if you build payment rails 
on a stablecoin system, you can make it actually incredibly uh, more uh, uh, less expensive and uh, save and bypass all those checkpoints. So it's just it's kind of like developing a system of teleport uh, teleportation rather than going through all these payment rails, which can take several days. You instantly teleport from one point to another point. And of course, PayPal might charge a little bit less for that, but they're raking it in as far as margins. And so I think that they can lower the cost for the consumer, even while they actually expand their margins on this product. And so it, it's been uh, one of the uh, things that people will point out is like, if you look at the market cap and the use and the volume, it's not particularly high for this product yet. Uh, it's not been well implemented. It takes time for, for these things to grow. Um, but uh you can see through this, if you go ahead and go down and click, um, not necessarily in the image, but uh, you can, there's just in the month of November, in two weeks, there's all these different exchange, exchanges and places where they've added support. Uh, so Yellow Card was one of the big ones at the bottom, November 15th. Uh, I believe that's based in Nigeria, but it's a large African exchange, kind of like uh, Block or Square. It's it's like that for Africa. By the way, it has a lot of backing from Jack Dorsey as well. Uh, won't get into him, but you know how I feel Not about him. <laughs> uh, but uh, you know, they they uh, use several different uh, stable coins. They they announced that they're using PayUSD, and uh, I I'd actually read about this maybe three or four days before. There was somebody that was just posting on. Um, on Twitter, and they talked about using Yellow Card to send money, or one of their uh, coworkers was sending it to Malawi. And previously, I, I think that the fees were eating maybe thirty percent of of those uh, the money that he was sending back. Of course, he still has to pay fees. Yellow Card gets theirs, PayPal gets theirs, uh, but it's a lot. It saves the the end consumer a lot while PayPal is able to make a little bit higher margin. You have multi-money down in Central America, PDAX uh, and uh, Coins PH in the Philippines, uh, Cayman Islands as well, bullish crypto exchange, uh, and the Hive added support. And then you have Ginkgo, which was that the most recent announcement on November mm -hmm. 28th, which is really interesting. Uh, just uh, the way that that can be used. You Even you as a tourist can go down uh, and, and maybe we'll go down there. I've got a sister that's planning to go down to Belize. Uh, and, and instead of carrying cash or uh, traveler's checks, you know, that's old and antiquated, you can uh, have your PayPal wallet and have PayUSD and be able to use that. And, and I th it, right now it's in its infancy. Um, there was a, an article that actually came out, I believe it was yesterday. I just posted on it today uh, with, with the PayPal guy um, that, uh, that uh, runs the stable coin. I, I, it's, I have to get his name here. Oh, Jose Ferdinand, uh, Fernandez da, da Ponte. Uh, so he actually came from a Latin American context uh, in payments, has been working for PayPal for quite a while. And uh, it talks about just how well um, this product can be integrated. Uh, he says one of the quotes from that article is uh, that when, what got his interest and PayPal's interest is you can move value around 26 times cheaper than current baking rails. So, yes, that's good for the consumer. It's also good for PayPal, who can disrupt some of these that have been in place for a couple of decades. So. It'll be very interesting to see what's going to happen. Of course, there's a short-term and a long-term case as far as what happens in 2024 with the regulation, the compliance, uh, the transparency, and then, of course, the growth of these individual regional exchanges. And then beyond 2024, uh, he especially sees us growing overseas, the Latin America, Southeast Asia, Africa, as we see uh, really just in the last two weeks in November. Um, and there's a possibility for an S-curve here. The, the, there's been a lot of stable coins that have launched. A lot of them have gone nowhere. But I will say most stable coins, when they launch, they don't have that name recognition, that backing that PayPal has, and they don't have nearly 430 million active users to be able to use their products. So I think that this could be a, a pretty big deal uh, over the coming years. Over the short term, I do think that we'll see some of the impact of that in 2024. Uh, but if I end up going long term in PayPal in 2025, 2026, and over the next decade, this is going to be a big piece that I think factors in that. Yeah, and I, I think it all, I mean, circle back to integration. Um, lots of great offerings, but the integration has to be seamless. It's, I mean, people probably, a lot of them, don't even know that this exists, don't even know that they can save money by using this product. And yeah, again, it's, it's like you said, it's because they, they try to create the Frankenstein's monster by just buying a couple of products here and there and never really doing much with the integration. Um, and again, this might be another one of those scenarios, or it can actually work out 
and they integrate it very, very well in the whole PayPal ecosystem. One thing I'll give Block and Jack Dorsey and his team uh, credit <laughs> is 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 the ecosystem that is actually working. Square, nice. Cash App, uh, Afterpay. I mean, it's it's pretty impressive what they've done there. And hopefully, I mean, if they can do it with Jack Dorsey as CEO, I strongly believe PayPal can can definitely do this as well. But yeah, it's it's going to be interesting to see what happens with especially this this story right here because I mean undercutting offering cheaper prices while having higher margins is is definitely a, a way a way to go um you get a lot of power from that as well and so the the competition story here changes a, a little bit um Absolutely. but yeah still very early days I mean I covered yesterday an article a bearish article on on uh, PayPal where I mean the writer was pretty negative on on the ceo's plan and on on paypal crypto and i was like i mean pay usa usd was is long is pretty pretty young i mean of course the volume the market cap will not eclipse right now i know some other stable coins out there which is normal um and the ceo didn't even have a quarter to work yet so yeah i mean people need patience i know i know retail doesn't doesn't really like the word patience anymore um because in the last couple of years we had things go up 30 percent 50 percent in a week or so i mean even even more recently um i mean i think square is up block is up 60 percent since the earnings uh, since the earnings call so yeah i think with paypal it's if you're in it and and we and we are successful with our thesis let's say and they execute correctly i mean I think it's going to be worth waiting another quarter or so because if it is oh, yeah. successful, I mean, you can outperform the market with just one position. So, so why not? Um, I, people forget that being up 100%, 150% or so on a stock is not something that you usually see. Just maybe in the last couple of years, we, we have seen this because of the pandemic, because of zero interest rates, and then we go up and then everything changes. But when your position is up 100%, 150%, you should be very, very happy, especially if it's in a short period of time. Yes. Yeah, and, and I'll say this, like I, I'll use an analogy here, or metaphor rather. Um, I, I see PayPal, and Alex Chris alluded to this. He said that he believes internally that they have all the right pieces, all the necessary pieces. So you can think of PayPal as an organization that's like a football team. We'll, we'll use your kind of football, not, not American mm. football, but either way, where they have some some players that are maybe a little bit past their prime, like PayPal branded, that did really well in the past that are you know a, a little bit downhill, but there's maybe still something there. You have some, some players that had a lot of potential that have done okay, but have perhaps underperformed expectations. Uh, you have a lot of new and upcoming players that are really exciting, but they're just, they're, they're new. You don't know what's there. And you have this team that does not play well together. They don't have a cohesive plan of attack, of defense, of supporting one another, or playing off their strengths. They just haven't managed as a team, just a collection of individuals. And so while there's been some excitement in the past, they have largely underachieved. And so what they've done instead is they said, you know what, we're going to bring in a new head coach, Alex Chris. We're going to bring in a new coaching staff and we're going to see how we do. If they really do have the pieces that I think that they have, if these coaches, uh, the the management that they've brought in, and they're phenomenal, by the way, like their, their reputation, uh, if they live up even to half of that, we have a major opportunity here on our hands as PayPal investors. Um, we have to see it. Uh, I think that we will. In, and over the next, I, I'm really uh, expecting over the next two quarters, mm -hmm. that's the time pl plan that I'm giving. Uh, the last quarter was a diagnosis, and I think Alex Chris did well there. Uh, the quarter four is going to be that cohesive roadmap as far as what to expect, when to expect. We may get inklings of that before. And of course, that uh, very detailed layout, the Intuit style breakdown and everything. We've seen some of those announcements already. And then quarter one needs to be execution. And if we don't see that, if we see, oh, it's going to be another losing season, you know, that's going to cause some uh, concerns there. The Bears might be right again. I don't think so, but we'll have to see how those games play out. Yeah, no, I agree. I like this example. It reminds me of my own team, uh, Chelsea FC, <laughs> which uh, <laughs> has performed very well in the past, but now it's a young, inexperienced team. We brought him a new coach and he brought him a new, new management as well. There is actually new ownership. Uh, so yeah, that, that example... I'm all too familiar. Unfortunately, this season has done has gone down the drain. So hopefully, the story will be different 
for for PayPal. But yeah, I think for many investors, I think the next two quarters, it's either we're fully in or we're fully out. Um, yes. Yeah. Next quarter, yes, we're going to get, I mean, great holiday season for now. I mean, the numbers don't lie, not just for, for PayPal, but for the other players as well. But then it's about the 2024 story. Um, and Q1 will already show us whether or not things things are working out. Um, I want to ask you, do you think they should have maybe, or maybe they will do it, a like a business update just like Adian did? Because they, I mean, they only report twice a year, so I can understand why they did it, especially after that huge hit on their stock, since PayPal, I mean, PayPal does it four times a year. Um, they report their quarterly earnings. So do you think they they should maybe do at the start of 2024, like a, a business update. Look, we're changing out of our reporting. There's a new CEO, a new team in place. This is what, what's going to go on this year and maybe in the next two years as well. Yeah, as an investor, the more information we get, the more transparency we get, even if it's things that we don't like, the better. Um, you, they, I don't think that they need something as uh, comprehensive and cohesive as Adyen's Investor Day. Um, you know, that, I think, was necessary just because they, they don't report very often. And so mm -hmm. it was like another earnings call. Um, but they do need something, uh, probably more than just an announcement. Uh, I'm, I'm expecting, and I could be wrong in this, but uh, reading, uh, well, it, I think it's very evident that Alex Chris is talking about uh, making some cuts, including uh, in, in personnel. And uh, so... I think that when that announcement happens, whether that happens before the end of the year here or early next year, um, it, it actually really surprised me if no cuts happen before the next quarter. I'd, I'd really want to hear why, because he was very clear at the earnings call. But I, I think that's going to happen. But when it does, it would be very helpful if at the very least that he made some appearances you know, on CNBC or, or other mm -hmm. uh, institutions where he just kind of laid out why they were making the cuts, that it wasn't because, hey, we're shrinking, we're dying, we need to make these cuts, but like, hey, we have a lot of bloat. These were great employees, we just didn't have a place for them. We, you know, we gave them very healthy packages, uh, but uh, here's the vision of PayPal going forward. And, and even just a segment that's 10 minutes long that explains that, Chris is a masterful communicator. Uh, he's very transparent. He's very goal oriented. He's a talent magnet. And so the more that he shows himself to investors and also to the media, the better for us. Yep, no, I agree. I mean, the fact that he's also t tweeting, he likes our tweets sometimes. Yes. Yep. Um, that was amazing. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's it's good because, I mean, I think he knows that the, I mean, the power of being transparent go, goes a long way. Um, I, I very much dislike when I open a report and suddenly there's a whole segment that is being replaced by, by something that is pretty useless. I mean, if you replace something, at least give us maybe something better or something that could give us a bit more, uh, a bit more context. Um, mm -hmm. yes, I've seen this with, with block a lot. I mean, sometimes they do give us the, the, uh, cash app users. Sometimes they suddenly give us something else or they don't give us anything, but I mean, at least they give us more numbers or maybe other business segments, stuff like that. So, okay, uh, I'll give them that. But yeah, with the cost cuts, I mean, we've seen Spotify, we've seen, I think, Twilio as well, still announcing cost cuts. So yeah, we're not done yet, I believe, with, it, with the cost cutting and the uh, job cuts, actually, for a lot of companies. Um, but yeah, it's it's not always a doomsday scenario. I mean, we've seen that with, with Meta as well. It was just, there were too many people there uh, I mean, X as well, they cut 75, 80%, and then the platform works pretty, pretty well. Lots of new features. So yeah, sometimes it's a must. It's a must to be a leaner company. You have to cut some people, unfortunately. Um, and it's not just making the company leaner. I mean, for from a financial standpoint, it just makes the decision-making also much faster. Fewer people to, to discuss with, to go through, um, things go much faster. So you can do more with less. I think that has been the trend in 2023 for a lot of companies. I think 2024 will just will just continue that trend. Yeah, and that's what I expect. So we'll see. All right. I think we're, yeah, we're nearing one hour. So someone has a question or a comment. Now will be, will be the time. I know there is one person. Any thoughts on today's dip? I mean, <laughs> we had whether that... Uh, that little report but it's a positive report so i don't see the you see why it should be impacted negatively but i don't know today's dip was just another paypal day i guess 
it, it could be uh, tax loss harvesting. Um, you know, it's a phenomenon. Also, that, yeah. Especially if it's an institution that just decided, you know what, I'm I'm going to go ahead and take the losses here and buy back in next year or, or not. Like they don't have to. Um, we may see more of that before the end of the year. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, we never, a lot, a lot of times we just don't know. Like it, the stock does what it's going to do. And we as paper, pal, shareholders see a lot of those days. It's never fun. Uh, I think it's short-term noise. We'll have to see. Nothing meaningfully changed with the company today. Exactly. I mean, even ye yesterday when, uh, when GTA 6, the trailer came out, Take two interactive suddenly dropped like two three percent or so after hours or so. that doesn't make any sense but hey the market some uh, sometimes acts irrationally um, and can stay irrationally for, for irrational for a long long time um so yeah when there are dips there are dips um there are people here comparing yeah uh buying square over paypal but square just doesn't look as solid on paper it's true i mean square on paper does not look as solid as as uh, as paypal far far from it i think uh yeah i mean they are also making some changes there finally uh, mm -hmm. i don't know why they waited until the end of 2023 but yeah also they don't i still believe they don't need twelve thousand people working there um but yet yeah, the cost cuts will definitely increase free cash flow um there was that big acquisition of afterpay but i'm happy that they use their own expensive shares to buy that so yeah, yeah, there is some some dilution there, but at least it's not a a cash a cash thing where I mean they they would have probably raised a lot of debt. So it's true. Square block, financially speaking, they are in a let's say worse position than than PayPal, but they're growing they're growing faster. Um, but both both good companies. I just don't I just don't don't see Jack Dorsey as a good publicly traded company CEO, but. Uh, <laughs> Oh well, I guess they do. Yeah, short term, it you know the, the stocks can do anything. But that's why I don't invest in Block. Is Jack Dorsey? It's and that's why I invested in PayPal. My um, investment uh, philosophy is if it's excellent management, I'm very comfortable investing in. And if it's terrible management, but a great product, a great company, otherwise, I'm just not going to invest. Uh, I think that they'll underperform over the long term. Uh, I could be wrong, uh, and I, I don't think that Block will do bad. I think it'll just underperform where they need to be. Uh, and stock-based compensation, no matter what they say, hmm. I think that they're going to continue to have a lot of that. So we'll see. Yeah, I mean, I I still secretly hope that Jack will step down, work on some philanthropical stuff with Bitcoin in, in Africa or something like that, and the guys of Afterpay will take over. Who knows? Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I still hold, I still hold pay, uh, block and PayPal actually right now as well. So we'll see, I think in the short term, they can, they can perform. I mean, the bar is also pretty low with them. And that's also one thing for, for PayPal for 2024, the year over year comparisons are, are not that bad for them at all. Um, so that's, that's definitely a, a tailwind, a tailwind for them. Absolutely. Yeah. We have here, yeah. What's your top three favorite fintech stocks? Well, personally, <laughs> I have in my in my core portfolio. I have Block, I have SoFi, and I have New Bank, New Holdings. Um, I have PayPal in the in the short term in the short term portfolio, but those those are basically obviously my three favorite. But I'm biased, so because I hold them. Uh, do you have your three favorite fintech stocks? Yeah, uh, I'd say PayPal right now is, is probably my favorite. Uh, it's not my largest, uh, and it's it's one of those that's not a long term hold yet. Um, I have to see that execution under Alex Chris, otherwise it's a trade and probably a losing trade. Uh, but uh, no, I, I I am excited by the company in the new direction for it. We've already talked about that. SoFi, uh, Anthony Noto is just exemplary leadership. They've pivoted incredibly well. Uh, the market basically, the government uh, took away their basically their product. They should be dead. Instead, they are going to hit gap profitability for the first time this next quarter. Uh, it's actually my second largest holding right now. And it's one of those that's long term for sure for the next five years. We'll have to see. Uh, I could easily see that be a decade long hold. Um, and I, I think that they're very undervalued and underappreciated. The bear case there is pretty, pretty weak. Evaluation is very tempting and attractive. And it's all about that management. If you if you are interested in it, just look at Anthony Noto and what he's done with that company, which should be dead but instead has grown immensely, does not grow like a bank. They're more than a bank, um, but you know, they're mostly a bank. And then uh, Robinhood, I think would be uh, the one after mm. that. It's it's my fourth largest holding. 
it's been a good week to own Robinhood, but you know the biggest piece with that is is that shift. Uh, well, the, the long term vision is as millennials and as Generation X as well gets more and more wealthy, uh, platforms like SoFi, like e even Block as well, uh, PayPal a little bit less, uh, and of course Robinhood are used by that demographic. And so as their wealth grows, those products should continue to do quite well. Uh, Robinhood, I think that we're entering a, a, a bull cycle for crypto for sure i still think that we're in a bull market even though it's slowed down a little bit maybe a bit mm -hmm. of a santa rally um, those are things that benefit uh robin hood they've roll, rolling out uh, to the uk slowly this year uh and uh, over next year uh, they're launching their crypto wallets uh or crypto trading uh throughout the entire uh, european union as well in the yeah. coming weeks which is a really good timing, I might add. And so, and right now they're making a, an incredible amount of revenue off of cash swaps. So I think they're going to enter this this golden spot where they'll hit graph uh, gap profitability again uh, this this next quarter. They were only slowed down uh, because of a lawsuit, which is why they went down to basically trading at their enterprise value, which was yeah. silly. Like they have no debt, they have a massive amount of cash, they have crypto holdings. It just it's I, I didn't understand the valuation, so I'm like, all right, I'm buying. I, I I just don't see it going down much further. It always can. The market can be irrational. We see that with most of the fintechs. But yeah, where they're going to hit, I, I think this between this uh, uh, crypto uh, trading, uh, between the bull market itself, between the cash swaps, uh, just kind of this this perfect um, Goldilocks zone for next year. I think midway through, and we'll see that reflected. I believe in the share price. So we'll see. Yeah, I mean. They're making quite quite some money on interest income as well. I know, yes, if interest rates come down, they'll make a bit less. But if interest rates come down, people usually are going to trade a bit more. Companies go up more as well um, in value. So so that would definitely benefit them. But yeah, I mean, Robinhood is also in, in that same portfolio with, with PayPal short term. Mm -hmm. If things work out, could be could be a good long term. Um, I mean, those are... The, I put it in the in the short term because it's those companies where not a lot should go right for it to actually move up quite a lot, um, yes. and the the risk is is pretty minimal, especially at the prices I I have. I mean, PayPal I'm at fifty seven dollars, so it's basically the price we're at we're at right now. So I'm pretty I'm pretty cool with that. And Robinhood I think I'm at ten, so right now I'm I'm also okay. Um, but yeah. I mean, one fintech stock that I would that I don't own, but I would love, I would have loved is is definitely Adian. I think um, yes, mm -hmm. if I had a if I had a spot in my portfolio, um, it's definitely that. I did I did a small trade in August when it when it actually dropped fifty percent, <laughs> but unfortunately after a jump of of close to 30 percent, I was like, okay, good enough. Could in have. one day. <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 but then it went up another another 30 percent or so um but yeah i mean 30 percent in in a day is, <laughs> don't have to be greedy it's good enough yeah they, they um you know I, I don't see the valuation being quite as attractive now i i there mm -hmm. i have like six stocks that are on my watch list of, of the things that i'd like to add i have a very small portfolio and adyen is actually at the top there and so um if the valuation stays where it's at and they continue to grow into that, uh, you know, after some of these shorter term trades, like Robinhood is not a long term position for me. I'll probably hold it through some of the next year, maybe all the next year. Uh, but uh, Adyen, I would love to hold and, and buy long term. They great management, great product. Everything is extremely cohesive, well integrated. They have very low stock based compensation. And, you know, there's a few downsides, too, but largely they're just they're phenomenal. So, um uh, We'll we'll see, but uh, I'm definitely going to be looking for an opportunity to add to add Yen. Yeah, I mean, in August, if if it weren't for the other opportunities out there, the the Robin Hoods at eight dollars or so, or or the PayPal at, at sub sixty dollars, I might have bought that that big crash for Adyen because, like you said, I mean, management is just incredible. The product is very very good. Um, but yeah, we'll see. I mean, if if one of these short-term trades of ours, I mean, PayPal or Robinhood has a very, very good 2024 and we're happy with the performance, maybe maybe some profits will flow into a company like Adyen, which definitely I can sleep very well at night knowing that I own that. I'm not going to be saying, oh, in a quarter or two, I might be out of it because, I mean, with that, it's, it's years and years of being extremely successful um, managing that business. And it's, it's a European company, yeah. It's in the Netherlands. They actually have pretty good companies there. ASML is another huge, huge, huge company there. Um, 
also expensive, but I mean, great companies with great management deserve a, a big premium. So, yes. I mean, even after that 50% crash, it was still expensive, traditionally speaking, but I mean, they deserve it. They deserve it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, no argument there. So, yeah. So with that, we think we can end it. So thank you very much for coming on. Despite talking about PayPal's bear case, I think it's pretty clear we're both bullish. There are things to consider. Um, I think next two quarters will say a lot about where, where we're heading as investors in PayPal, whether we are still all in or all out remains to be seen. We'll see that in approximately five months or so. So thank you very much, Roy, for coming on. Thank you all for tuning in and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.